Seriously? Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. This is the closest thing I have to a portable projector screen. Now, it's not too bad. I mean, I wouldn't call it compact or anything, but it does a decent job of folding everything away into a decent package. However, for all of this, you don't get too much. So there you go, that's what all that gets you, a 40 by 40 screen. So I mean, I guess if you're displaying Instagram pictures, it's a decent size, or you know, old school slides, which is what this was probably made for. I got it years and years ago at the Salvation Army, and I've got a fair bit of use out of it, but really any 1080p projector is only going to use about half the screen. So all of this is being wasted. Plus 40 inches, I mean, most of our TVs are bigger than that. I think I can do better in size and in making it a lot more compact. If you search for a portable projector on Amazon, you find these. It's basically just a screen with some eyelets that you can hang on a wall, which I guess is technically portable, but I really want something that you can put anywhere, especially if there is no wall. There are these things that basically you build kind of a big pipe frame, which is closer to what I want. But looking at the picture and the woman holding it, the bag is still quite large. So while it is a much bigger screen, we're still not getting to that small compact thing that I'm looking for. And of course there are the blow up screens, which are ridiculously expensive and kind of overkill for what I'm looking for. Plus you need to have this big blower that's constantly running. So your screen actually needs electricity to be used. So that's really not what I'm looking for either. Thinking outside the box a bit, banners. Specifically, these banner frames. It's a relatively small thing that can stretch a large rectangular piece of material. I mean, looking at this picture, all we have to do is rotate it 90 degrees, and there's our portable projector screen, albeit a bit thin. So if only you could just get this as a blank white banner. We'll hold that thought. Another idea I had was collapsible bounce cards. These things are relatively cheap, although it does seem difficult to buy just one. They all seem to come in multi-packs. But they do come in about the size of a screen that I'm looking for. However, they don't fold down to an incredibly small size. Yes, they're very flat, but it's still a pretty big disc. And also we have these extreme rounded corners. So either we're gonna be chopping off a lot of our image or the actual screen that we can use is still quite small. But looking down a little bit further at the very bottom of this page, there it is. There's our bounce card stretched just like that banner. Even including the stand, this is an extremely small package for a relatively decent sized screen for a pretty good price. Overall, if I was going to just purchase something instead of trying to make it, I think this is what I'd go with. But why buy something that you know will work when you can spend hours prototyping something that probably won't even work at all? So to make the frame, my first thought was to try and use some miniature tent poles. I have this Picnic Pal. It's basically a miniature tent designed for food. And if you look at the bottom, we're already pretty much seeing exactly what I'm looking for, just a nice, large, tight screen area. So something like this is almost already done, except I don't really need all this vertical space. So my thought would be to have the supports basically be more in line with the screen. So possibly one curving down and one curving up and then being able to attach it somewhere in the middle to a stand. Now this is a neat little thing and I really don't want to sacrifice the poles for my screen prototype. Trying to just buy these on their own is a bit challenging. Plus carbon fiber, I'm assuming. I'm not really sure what you need to cut that or how difficult that's gonna to be to work with. So my immediate second thought were some of these driveway markers. They're readily available. You can get them all over the place. They have similar bendy properties to the tent poles. However, the thin ones bend a lot better than these thicker ones. 
And the thin ones are all attached to these big spring mechanisms because they're designed to bounce back if you hit them. And because of that, they cost twice as much, and then I'd just be chopping that off and wasting it anyway. Plus, I'd have the same issue with what do I use to cut these and how are they going to react when I try and cut them. I'm also intrigued with the umbrella mechanism. That's something else that can be quite a small package and then expand to something quite large and rigid. And then, especially if you invert it, we could get a decent sized screen there. Relatively low profile, could possibly attach this to like a tripod. So I think this could have some real potential. But for today, if you haven't guessed yet, the material that I'm gonna use to make my frame, some good old PVC. I use PVC all the time. It's a fantastic material to prototype with. It's readily available and extremely cheap. Now, I'm not gonna get the most refined and compact design that I possibly could, but I will get a very fast design. And I'll know right away if I'm on the right track, if this thing's even gonna work. And if it does, then I'll have a really great base to build upon if I wanna try and make a more refined version too. Now I actually have a nice big piece of 60 inch projector screen vinyl that I removed from my pull down backdrop. Now my first thought was that I could just use this for my new screen. However, my idea for making it a lot more portable is that I wanna be able to fold the screen and this material really doesn't fold that well. So I think I'm gonna find something else. Blackout curtains. These are specialty curtains with an extra layer of material that help prevent light from shining through, which should work great for a projector screen. Now you can actually get blackout curtain material at the fabric store, which may be cheaper than just buying some curtains off the rack. This was just a more convenient option, plus I think they were on sale. But before I get too deep into things, it's probably a good idea to open these up and just do a quick test. I'm actually probably gonna use the back side. It's a bit smoother and doesn't show as much of the front texture. All right, so the projector that I'm actually building this for is just this tiny little thing. It's a uh, Magnasonic, just a tiny little pocket DLP projector. So let's uh, get the lights off. Yeah, I definitely think the back side works quite a bit better. Now it is pretty wrinkly, but I'm hoping once I stretch it and maybe we can iron it a bit, it won't be too bad. But I'd still really like to be able to fold it just to get it nice and small. But I guess if I really have to roll it that's not the end of the world. Now this little projector does not throw very much light, so it definitely needs to be used in a very dark setting. My larger Epson projector works a bit better in a bit brighter light. So the material really does work pretty well. Run an iron over this, I think it's gonna work okay. All right, so first I'm just going to cut off the curtain rod pocket, then we'll cut it to length, and then we'll get out the sewing machine. Aha, rotary blade, we meet again. But this time I shall not be sliced by you and your razor sharp edge. Holy cow. That thing does do an amazing cut. I'm surprised I haven't used these more sooner. When used properly, these things are great. Yeah, that's a nice size. I like that. Now with the remaining flap, I wanna make four corner pockets that the PVC pipe can stretch into. Holy crap, four sheets. Cut through it like it was nothing. And well, I got eight pockets, so I got extra if I miss. Now let's, let's sew these two on and see if this thing has any chance of actually functioning. There we go. That's pretty nice and taut. We might be onto something here. All right, let me get those other two pockets made. All right, that should be all the sewing done. This is kind of my current plan for the center fitting. So this will connect to a tripod or a stand, and then those will be the two curves on the back side. Theory, how much can one of these really, really bend? Yeah, and this might be 
harder than uh, maybe something like that. Right, so that's gonna be an issue. This thing's far too big and awkward for the table, so moving to the floor. Now I think that first that configuration I had is probably the best. Because this right there, that's what stretches the rest of it. So I don't have any of those fancy screw snaps that I used on the wood storage tarp thing, but, and I don't know why I didn't realize it, I don't see any reason why I can't just take a regular snap and drive a screw through it. So I'm gonna do that. And there we go, instant screw snap. That's super simple. Why would I have not thought of that? Who knows? I just need to put one on here. Then that can snap on like that. Can go in like that. That can go in like that. Nice. What if I put snaps here and here to prevent those from moving and popping in and out? I should cut in the splints first, just to be sure. 40, so 20. Still works just fine. All right. All right, that still works. Oh, is that in the frame? Great. It's good filming, Nick. I can drill right through both to get the exact placement that I want. Now, oh, hold on, that'll make it a bit more challenging to put together, won't it? Eh, eh. Let's just try it. Worst thing can happen is just have to take it off. Yeah, so you just snap that in first, then couple those in. Yeah, I think that'll work. I, think I like that. You know what? A piece off like this to do that. I don't think that's necessary, but I do think a piece like that really might help. Now finding a plus piece in the CPVC or even regular PVC can be a bit challenging if you can find it at all. So I'm just going to basically make one by using an end cap and we'll just screw it on to the bottom there. There we go, instant plus. So now we can put a piece in there and would a pocket or just another snap? I probably just another snap. It's so easy to just screw on those snaps. I don't know why I was thinking it needed to be more difficult. Uh, where's the little snap thing? Holy cow, that's, that's not too bad. Now I just wanna put in a T here and this is how I'm going to attach it to a uh, stand. I would be very surprised if I had a 45. Well, look at that. I think this thing actually worked. I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how the frame came out. I think it stretches the screen quite well. As you can see, I have it standing. All I did for that was just add a 45 and then a post in the back. Now, if you want it up further off the ground, that post can be removed and we can add a little adapter, just a short piece of PVC with a quarter inch bolt in it. And then that can attach to a tripod. And that brings it up to probably a more appropriate viewing height. Now I did iron it a bit to try and remove some of the fold lines. You really need to watch me iron. Go, go back outside. Go back outside. 
But of course, when I go to put it away, I'm just going to reintroduce a lot of those folds and creases. I could compromise and maybe only fold it in half and then roll it up so I'd only have to deal with a fold line through the middle. Or perhaps, what if I just introduce one more piece of fabric? Something that maybe doesn't capture folds and creases and stretch that over. Look at that! Look how smooth and flat and clean our projection surface is now. This came out better than I thought it would. I am amazed with how well this works and I can take this off, fold it, scrunch it, do anything I want and it's not gonna capture any of those creases or folds. So I think that's a perfect solution for that. Now, even using blackout drape material and this additional layer of fabric, we are still seeing the frame through it quite a bit. So I'm not sure how much that's gonna show once the sun goes down and we start projecting onto this. So we'll have to test that, but also, we need to take this whole thing apart and see how small it actually gets because that was pretty much the main point of this build. So let's do that first. This outer surface is just this really stretchy material. So when you scrunch it, it doesn't hold any of those creases. So it works great for this, but the stretchier the material, the harder it is to work with, especially if you're sewing it. So it does look quite rough in the back, but on the front, it looks fine. And again, this whole thing is just a prototype, but all I did was just sew in a pocket. So it just kind of stretches over the top and then I added a few pieces of Velcro on the edges just to pull it taut. Another great advantage with this is if you're setting this up outside or even inside, you're probably gonna get a lot of dirt and dust on the front of the screen. So this way, once it's all set up, you can just stretch this clean sheet over it. You don't really have to worry about whatever you get on the front. There we go. I'd say that is quite a respectable teardown size. Even if you include the tripod, we are still way smaller than this giant but tiny 40 by 40 inch screen. And I mean, you can see the potential here. If we traded up these PVC rods for something like carbon fiber tent rods, how much smaller we could actually make it. But I think as far as compactness and travel worthiness, this build definitely succeeded. Now, before I put all this back together and we do our night test, there was one final extra fancy thing I want to do. Can you guess what I'm gonna do? This is uh, elastic, if you can't tell. Yep, I'm gonna make it just like actual tent posts and we're gonna run elastic through the whole thing. This should make it incredibly easy to put together so we won't have to mess around with which piece goes where. Plus it should make it quite a bit more stable. You might've seen a few times where as I was bending it, the pipe had a tendency to pop out of the fitting. If I have elastic running through the whole thing, that should keep everything taut and prevent that from happening. All right, so I'm gonna drill a hole through my end cap. And make sure this is all assembled correctly. Also quickly, I came up with a cool way to attach these to the end of the pipe. So I have a hole drilled in the end cap and I have my two lines. I fish one line through the top so that it's kind of going on backwards. And then we can just tie this off and then one more knot for safety. Okay. And now I can just fish that knot down, pop the cap and we have a really clean looking, really secure hold on that bungee. So I think that's a really cool method for doing this, for making your custom tent poles with CPVC. How cool is that? Just like a real tent pole. That's so cool. I actually doubled up the elastic, seeing as this is just made for clothing, so it's a bit stronger, but, but I mean, yeah, that, look at that. That pulls it right together, just like a real tent pole. So that's really cool. I think that's definitely worth doing. That's gonna save so much time fiddling with which piece is which piece. So, all right, I'm gonna do this to the other pieces and then we'll get it back together and then we'll see how it looks at night.
Hey, hey, am I on it right now? How's it look? I can't tell because I'm being projected on it and this hasn't happened yet. Hey, how's it look? It looks fine. Oh, it looks awesome. I knew it no, looked awesome. I, I said it looks fine. Anyway, actually, I'm pretty proud of this build. I think it's a really great prototype and proof of concept. I'm really pleased with the overall frame that I came up with. I think using PVC was definitely the way to go. I was able to make a lot of changes on the fly really quickly and really easily. I didn't have to worry about materials or working with said materials. And now I have a great base to build upon if I want to try and make a version two using the carbon fiber tent rods. There'd be very little guesswork in what I need to do because I can just replicate what I've already done in PVC in the tent rods. Although I am really proud of my PVC tent rods. They work just like the real thing. The elastic in them is really cool. They work really well with one caveat. For a straight rod, no big deal, it's great. But with the amount of bending that I'm doing, these little tiny couplers really aren't cut out for it. In fact, I had one snap on me. I was able to fix it just putting a pipe clamp around it but something much longer, like you see in the actual tent rods, would probably be better. I'd probably be better off making my own custom couplers using my CPVC into PVC trick. The CPVC can go a lot deeper into the PVC and stand up to bending a whole lot better than the tiny little couplers. So before doing a version 2, I might do a version 1.5 and upgrade all my couplers to custom ones for an overall superior product. But as you can see, even in its current state, it's working just fine. I mean, I assume I'm being projected on it right now. And this is the real projection, there's no effects going on. Well, I mean, there's effects in the video going on. Like, actually, let's get some color. There we go. So that should give you a better idea of how it looks. And remember, we're only projecting with this tiny little projector. So it stands to reason a bigger, brighter projector is gonna give you a brighter image. But I think the screen that we came up with is a really good design and a really clean surface and it's gonna give you a good result either way. But anyway, my sincere thank you for watching once again. I am Nikki Clements, if you're wondering. Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for DLP. Anyway, I'm off to make.